Well, my name is Cecilia Cunningham. I'm the consultant for Vivelis in the US. Uh, I'm gonna repeat a little bit the format of the presentations that we've done in the past. I'm gonna be presenting the ripening dynamics on this season uh, based on the sugar load concept. So just a quick reminder on what is the very active sugar load. It's basically the evolution in time of the amount of sugar that we have in the berries. For these, we have a specific tool that is called diastem, and it measures the volume of the berries of a representative sample that we take from the vineyards. And, um, and also we measure color for white varieties. But basically what we're more focused on is the volume. Crossing this um, value of volume, we, uh, with the bricks or the sugar concentration in grams per liter, we get uh, the exact amount of um, sugar per berry. And this for us is a physiological parameter that indicates a lot of, uh, gives us a lot of information about the balance of the plants and the overall uh, march of the, of the harvest. We start measuring uh, right after Verizon uh, after this, we have a period that we call the active sugar load period. It normally changes from year to year and areas, but it's normally between 30 to 50 days. After this kind of month, almost two months of, of load, uh, the plant really stops synthesizing sugar, as you know, and uh, any variation that we see in the bricks is going to be due to uh, a loss in volume and a concentration in this volume that will increase the bricks. So, this is really important. This is how we really measure maturity because the increase of the bricks at the end, it can be really affected by the conditions of the season. And at this point of um, end of sugar load is actually when the plant starts ripening. When we see all the other parameters, physiological parameters and the, synth the, um, the synthesis of precursors, all the, the other the polyphenols developing after this. So this end of sugar loading is key. And in the meantime, we get a lot of information from these curves. We get, based on the duration of this phase, we can get a good idea of how the, the year is developing. If we have heat waves like we experienced in the past, we will have a shorter uh, load. Uh, we will have less times of synthesis, so we will reach probably lower breaks at the end. Um, the date, like I said before, at the end of the sugar load, it will be the, the beginning of the ripening phase. And a, really good parameter in terms of how we can predict how certain uh, aromatic windows, uh, when they will happen. Uh, in terms of the speed of synthesis, we can get really good information if the plant is suffering any imbalancement, if the yield is really not in a, in a good level, if we have too much, too many bunches, if we have a lot of vigor, we will be able to see this in terms of synthesis and the speed of it. For us, the amount of sugar at the end of the sugar load, it's, uh, it's an important parameter because it's an indicator of quality. Uh, we know that it's connected to a lot of other components that Scott is going to present later, but uh, the sugar can give us in an easy, fast way a uh, good idea if we will reach a certain potential or not. And connected to this, we have the bricks at the end of the sugar load that's for sure it's connected to the amount of sugar per berry, but sometimes it can differ if we have dilution effects and we have bigger berries. So just uh, some references, so you have some numbers. Uh, for the last five years in California, we have these numbers that are representative for each uh, variety. So Cabernet Sauvignon, as you can see, they, it reaches sometimes, uh, in average, 190 milligrams of sugar per berry. And it's not uh, as good as a loader as Pinot and Chardonnay. Uh, the speed, that really is a parameter that changes a lot from year to year, so it's good to have a reference. But mainly what we look at is the duration and the date. So we're talking for Cabernet Sauvignon, like average, average uh, California, around the 25th of August, and for Pinot and Chardonnay, uh, the beginning of September. And the bricks are always in between 21, 22, so we, we consider them good bricks at the end. Um, so this year, luckily, we had an amazing year. And in terms of, uh, of load, we have uh, beautiful curves. We didn't see what we were experiencing 
especially in what we saw in 15, 16, with these heat waves hitting us and really affecting the synthesis, we had the most steady and nice season that I've seen, at least since I'm here. Um, in terms of what this year was, we had, if you remember the, the reference that I gave, we had a really high uh, synthesis of sugar at the end. We had 290 milligrams of sugar per berry, which is super high. Um, the bricks were really high too, and the speed was, was, was high, well, everything was good. And what's interesting is that we have around 52 days of, of load, of photosynthesis, so really long season, preparing the grapes for the ripening phase. Uh, and the date, as you can see, is the 13th of September, and we were talking before the 2nd of September, I think, is the average. So more than 10 days uh, delayed than, than the average. If we compare these last three years, you can see, I'm sorry, yeah, you can see how um, 18 had much uh, more sugar at the end than 17 and even 16. Our 2017 was already a good year. We consider it a, a good year in terms of load, especially for Pinot, sometimes Cabernet is not the same. Uh, we had 52 days compared with 37, 38 days, so very, very long, and really good breaks at the end. So this would say in our parameters and with the models that we manage that we will have a really good harvest in terms of aromatic profile and quality of the wines at the end. Uh -huh. So just a little more of what I'm saying. So we had a great period of load, uh, a lot of breaks at the end, so potentially we would have great wines at the end that we could reflect on this. But I think it's, this is very much aligned with what uh, Sebastian, uh, Sebastian was uh, showing before and what we've seen from Will's presentation too. So we had a lot of probably vigor that explains this situation and uh, bigger berries in general, less water restriction and especially we saw these two heat waves that, that you presented, but they did not affect the synthesis like we saw it, especially in Cabernet in previous years. For the very evolution, which is also interesting because it will tell us how is the evolution and the maturity phase when we're reaching the end of harvest and we're reaching the peaking time, we saw a very steady volume. Again, normally with the volume curves, you see this belt kind of a curve, you know, we reach a maximum and then it decreases, it loses volume. Uh, in this case, it was super stable. It stayed stable until the very end with, of course, some variations, but compared to the previous years, you know, so you have the blue bar is the maximum volume reach and the orange bar is the minimum at the end. Normally, this last analysis is very close to harvest, so we consider that as the final volume. Um, if you see 18 compared to 17 and 16, the loss of volume was really low. 5%, this is really, really, really low. Normally, a normal loss of volume is around 10%. And in this case, we were under that number. So stable volume, bigger berries. Uh, and again, this is connected to the conditions that we were seeing. Probably this lack of stress in early stages, they um, favor the, the set and also the development of bigger berries. And uh, the longer sugar load probably helped with this, so we didn't have these like, aggressive um, events happening that really impact on, on the berries. Just a quick reference on Cabernet Sauvignon, because the question when we were talking with Thibault was like, OK, yeah, that P that's Pinot. Normally, Pinot has smooth mm, curves, and it's uh, a little more stable. Cabernet Sauvignon tends to be a different thing, but we see the same trend. Actually, if you see the three previous years in terms from Bryson to the very end of the season, um, we had uh, the, the, the same evolution. So later, bigger berries and uh, similar uh, behavior. And just finally to make a link between the wine profile and what we see in the grapes, is this is part of the models that we work. So after this zero day that we mentioned, we have these models that can help us predict uh, what will be uh, the aromatic window at a certain time. So what, for that, we use what we call day, day plus or days after. And it's just the days after end of sugar load. So the zero is the moment of the sugar load stop. And after that, we count the days. For that, we have 
different models for different varieties. For the Pinot, in terms of aromatics, we have that around the 28th of September, that's around the day 15 after sugar load stop, we reach the fresh profile window. And around the 8th of October, we were finding ourselves into the ripe window. So Pinot has a shorter cycle, even if it's delayed. Normally, we're okay in, uh, in terms of picking decisions. We are normally not that pressed, like in long cycle varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon. But either way, this year was, was really great, and the conditions for the ripening was so good, were so good that really helped all the varieties get to the end. And actually, like uh, Sebastian said, it's like really a year where the winemakers were able to make their choices in terms of, uh, of profile. And for the palette, we have a similar situation. So day 15, with a profile that is fresh, probably more intense on, in terms of aromatics, uh, but more diluted. Uh, and around the 8th of October, to reach something richer and fuller in terms of uh, viscosity and, and tannins. Um, so thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. If not, I will leave you with uh, the next presenter. Yeah. Uh, which was kind of the opposite of what I would have expected because the Cabernet stopped long before the Yeah, started. yeah. Why do you, uh, it's, do you it's counterintuitive, but it's the reality. We see that sometimes even long cycle varieties, they stop around the same time. So it really depends on the year, but they're going to be moving around the same, like I said, 30 to 50 days. All the varieties stop at that time. Some of them, like, white varieties like Sauvignon Blanc that they're conducted in a more vigorous way, they keep loading. Or um, Merlot, sometimes it, it has that behavior. But the load, it happens around the same time. What changes is the ripening dynamic at the end. So Cabernet has a more longer cycle and normally uh, has 30 days for the fresh window profile and around 50 for the ripe profile. So it's just more push aside. So you would think it's longer, but the the load cycle is exactly the same or similar. Does that make any sense? Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, anyone else? All right. Well, thank okay. you, Cecilia. Yeah.